Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Today, we're item hunting. And good lord are we item hunting. Um, first up, we're going to go ahead and use the new fancy schmancy Dark Word teleporter that's been installed at the castle entrance, courtesy of Ganon Industries. And really our next goal, like I said, is just to head around and pick up a bunch of items. The first one I'm going for is a piece of heart out in the Lake Hylia area, which um, has been taunting the fuck out of me for a long time, and I can finally do something about it. It's time to man up. Inside this circle of arrow shapey stones that are almost slightly skull-like, but I can't really... God, you're being a dick, Puff Bomber. Um, anyways, use the magic mirror inside the circle, and if you're not... Inconveniently close to that buzz bomber, you do go ahead and pick up a piece of heart. And for the love of God, unless you really, really want to, don't jump down on accident. Make sure that's a conscious choice. Anywho, next up's the Quake Medallion. So, while we've never arrived really from this angle before, this is in fact the Witch's Hut area. Oh God! Bad Niox. Now have no life. I'm going to have to run- OH MY GOD THE BEES! Could something just have hearts in it? I don't care what. Anything. Anything with hearts. You? Hearts. No? Fine. Heart. Give me a heart. Oh god, that's a bee. Does a bee drop a heart? No, of course not. Alright. Excuse me while there's a tiny bit. Oh, thank god. Nothing I wanted less than to have that sound just constantly going while we're getting this freaking Quake Medallion. Okay, perfect. Alright, now there's a little bit of breathing room. Anywho, um, what we gotta do is go ahead and head up here towards the Waterfall of Wishing area. Or the Dark World's equivalent. Whatever it shall be named. This guy is actually not an Octorok. He's a Slarok. Or Slarok. I think it's supposed to be Slug and Octorock kind of combined. Regardless, they're a little bit faster and a little bit more annoying. But really not that much, because your shield can't still block their attacks unless they're running around like maniacs into you. This game seems to have an odd definition of curses. Because uh, every time you do something that says something involves a curse, it's actually really good for you. By interrupting the evil giant catfish, we get the Quake Medallion. Which has an awesome, awesome animation that I'm not going to show, just to piss off Akari. Ha 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 Oh lord. Anyway, next item. Hi, this is Future Leading Man. I'm speeding up a bunch of segments because it's really boring and I have nothing to say. If I get really, really bored in the future, I might leave my past version of myself talking and then leave him really sped up because I think it's funny. I don't know. We'll see. I have no idea why this took so long or why I was dicking around so much. And that is entirely why this is sped up. Like this? This is useless. Don't do this. And over here, we get our next piece of magic, which is Bamos. And I need the Book of Medora. I love how they give you a quick demonstration of it, and it actually goes off and kills an enemy, which is great. As opposed to Quake, which was just like, hey, here's this thing. I don't know what it does, but fuck it. Alright, so we're going to do two things here. The first of which is to go ahead and get some money, and the second is, of course, we're going to go ahead and get the final piece of magic. Now, the money we actually found in the Light World previously, I just didn't pick it up because I had so goddamn much at the time. Oh god, that's a lot of crows. Is there always that many crows? Holy fuckballs. Stop it. Oh god, why does everything have to hurt me?
which is not fun. All right, so over here, if you've noticed, if you uh, reveal a secret location, it will continue to stay revealed, and we have a lot of blue gems we can pick up here, which is great because I don't know, we'll we'll have to go upgrade our arrows and bombs again later. So yay, more moolah, 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 moolah. All right, we're done here. As long as you stay on the same line, the duck will always appear in the same section, and he can actually pick you up anywhere along that line, which is pretty nice and convenient, especially if you get caught into a fight with a friggin' knight or soldier or whatever the hell he was that wasn't paying attention. Oh, God! Mr. Miyagi, I need help. Okay, thank you. I will never talk to you again. Also, sorry about your daughter or whatever it was. Granddaughter? Don't remember. Don't care! I'll find her in a crystal. Anywho, um, let's see. In this section, we're gonna go ahead and head to the top. I think the only magic we have left is ether. Ether. Ether? Ether. I've said ether my whole life. We're gonna go with ether because I couldn't possibly have been wrong when I was six. Or tech tights, they're really goddamn annoying in Link to the Past because they do that jump away thing the Stalfos do instead of actually just staying still like they do in every other goddamn game. Ugh. Oh, and these guys. Let's go talk to them. Oh, they have a lot to say. Alright. So, we're going to leave. Alright, up here over by the Tower of Hera there was a section we could have visited, but it would have done nothing because unless you have the Master Sword, as it says in every one of these inscriptions, you can't really do shit. So, why bother? Ether is of course the required magic, you actually need it later in the game, so make sure you get this goddamn medallion, that's why it's so easy to find. Alright, next stop, Kakariko Village. There's a few things we haven't seen in this section before, like over here to the right, there is a little hammer pound thing. That's what they look like in the light world. There's not a whole lot of sections that you actually use them, so they are kind of easy to miss, especially since they kind of blended the little stumps next to them. Ooh, pretty fairy. Anywho, um, we haven't actually been over to the smithy area. This is the sign I was talking about in the very first video. So, yay. Um, but yeah, these are the smithies. If you've noticed, there is a little stump you can knock down. Doing so lets us drop into this cave. In this cave, if you try to enter from the bottom, is protected by an enemy door that you can't really go through. And what's here is a bowl of tomato juice. So we just add a little bit of seasoning. And that awakens the demon. Love this guy. So weird. Someone had a really good time doing the translation here. Now let's demonstrate. What used to take up one little dot of magic by doing a single thing of magic powder now takes two. And that's my demonstration on how our magic bar is now twice as big, even though it says half, but... Yeah, maybe they were. Maybe it's a giant joke about how playtesters didn't understand what was happening or something. Anywho, over here is the smithy. And his partner's gone. He can't temper our sword. So, we leave. It does also have a little like, cool puff of smoke coming from the chimney. Alright, so next up, Lost Forest. And I fucking hate the Lost Forest. A lot. But it's important we use the Dark World teleporter there, so yay. 
Alright, so this finally gets us to the stupid hammer thing we need and reveals the Darkwood teleporter I said was there all along. Yay! Um, this rock is actually a dark rock, which you from may or may not be able to tell there. The coloring doesn't quite work so well on those uh, larger rocks, in my opinion. But you can't pick it up yet. You don't have a good enough mitt. Power glove is not bad enough. You know, I don't know why I was doing that. Somehow I thought there was something in there. I guess not. Um, this is the Village of Outcasts, as you can see. Village of Outcasts is full of goddamn thieves. And this top section is a much, much larger jail. Interesting. Hmm. Mur, mur. One rupee? Fine. Uh, the Village of Thieves is pretty, or Village of Outcasts is pretty interesting. There are, in fact, a fuck ton of rupees here. So I, it's kind of weird how it's like people without rupees aren't welcome when there's just a ridiculous amount inside these houses. In fact, there's three spots with 300. I want to say you can almost fill up the enti your entire uh, counter here. Nothing I need there. Alright, so there is an important reason to come here, though. Several, actually, later. But first off, the one we're going for is a piece of art. And to talk to this guy, so we have some foreshadowing. Yep, that is a strange story. And he's also told us exactly how to get to one of the bosses, or one of the next dungeons. These, of course, Dark Rocks, can't pick them up. So, um, what we can do is head down here, and you can see this guy. This guy is obviously very protected by Dark Rocks, something we'll have to take care of later. And he's actually extremely important. Down there are also is an archery range, which I don't really give a crap about. Instead, what we need to do is go find and play the uh, chest game. It should be up here in the left-hand corner. That, by the way, is a Dark World Thief. They look like foxes for some reason. Anyway, let's head inside. So, this is the chest game. Alright, so you talk to the guy. You pay... Oh, thank God! You can't tell, but this is seriously uh, attempt number eight or something. Hopefully I edited it well enough that you couldn't tell. Future me, did I edit it well enough? Good. I like how I assumed that I did. Um, let's see... Fuck, now my brain's dead. Um, this is the Dark World version of the Sanctuary. There's nothing really interesting here. It's a big hole in a... C hole in a rock. That is what we call a cave. It's a hint for later. If we get a bigger bomb, we can break that crack inside the pyramid wall, and there's some sexiness behind it. Um, over here, more treasures. First up, we have a piece of heart. If you head up to this section and use the magic mirror, I'll put us on top of a nice little cliff that nobody probably remembers is there because I certainly barely explored that myself. But whatever. Bomb the back of the wall. And a piece of heart. Awesome. We're actually relatively close to finishing up the pieces of heart. Um, 
Thankfully, it, I mean, it only took one giant collection video to do that. But uh, we're on our way. This guy's down here, by the way. These are, in fact, Poe's. The other guys in the Dark World are Reapers. They look very similar. But uh, I think they don't have the little dot eyes. They have, like, some weird skull face thingy going on. Not even a very scary skull face thingy. Oh, crap, I'm on a bush. So this is what happens if you teleport uh, to the other world while there's an object behind you. It just sends you back. Instead of, you know, fusing you with a bush and forcing you to adventure as Bushman. Here's the graveyard secret I was giving Akari crap for in the comments, or... Actually, I think I did it in video form, too, but I do that anyways. It's really hard to tell when I give Akari crap. Uh, that's the magic cape. There's a couple things that are pretty important that we'll get with it. One being a piece of heart, and another an item. Alright, next piece of heart. Alright, so you may remember this tree. This was where the woodcutters were... Well, saying something felt weird, well, it's because it was goddamn hollow. And inside is a whole mystical cave. Okay. Fairies on one side, don't need those. And over here, piece of hearts. And the cave system leads right to the back of the bumpkin's house. Which is interesting. Alright, we're out of here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and get a special item, but to do so, there's a pretty solid way, in my opinion, that you need to do so. You can either pick up the red potion or the green one. I'd recommend the green one, because it's cheap, and I'm cheap. You can also go to the waterfall, uh, waterfall of wishing and throw in a bottle if you want to get the green potion for free. Anyway, once you got the green potion, you head to Death Mountain. From here, you hop in the teleporter, head down to this particular drop-off point, and inside. Now, we could have gotten here before, but there would be no goddamn purpose, because we didn't have the mallets. And if we did, all these goddamn spikes are in the way. To deal with the spikes, we use the magic cape. The magic cape, of course, protects us from the spikes causing no damage. Now you can do this if you're really crazy by having enough hearts and running all the way through and drinking potions, but I recommend just getting the double magic bar and doing it this way. Sure, it's close, but whatever. And of course, when you as you leave, uh, that's the whole purpose for the green magic. Inside, we're gonna find the Staff of Burna, or Cane of Burna. Anyway, here you do wanna drink your potion and head out. Alright, so that's pretty much it, as far as I know. What we're gonna do is head back to Link's house, and then I'm gonna save... ...and probably deal with the rest of this later, cuz... I don't know, fuck it. There's still more stuff we could grab, I'm pretty certain, but I don't even care anymore. Bye! Alright, I'm back. Time for more Zelda. And... I don't know. Actually, this might be really short. I'm probably going to have to combine it with the previous episode. Anyway, in this upper section, there is, in fact, a Dark World teleporter right here on Lake Hylia's shores. Do lakes have shores? I'm going to say yes. Anyway, the place we need to go is that strange, weird building that I was mentioning before. Also, this guy right here that I'm messing around with, that's a like like. I think I may have shown them off before. I'm showing it off again, because they're jerks, and you need to be very, very... Why is there a bee here? Grr. Oh, God damn it! I have killed the enemies. Can they just stay dead? Thank you. Anywho, um... This section down here is the water temple. Yeah, as I was saying, it's just some sort of strange building in the uh, light world, but here, of course, in the dark world, it's a giant fucking palace. Over here again, we have a telepathy brick. Where is the holly holly oxen free? Decides to let us know about the 
fact that in the dark world, light world, things are connected, changes in one realm will affect the other, and really they mean changes in the light realm will affect the dark realm. Because I'm pretty certain I've never seen it used the other way, ever. Anywho, this is a cue for us to use the magic mirror here. And you may remember back to a previous video when I uh, lowered the water. <laughs> Well, that was good. Uh, yeah, I lowered the water level of the lake by pulling a switch. This switch. Alright, so as you can see, the water seems to go further off, almost indicating that there would be some sort of palace or something there, but there's not. Because this, this place is lies. And instead, the palace exists here in the dark world, where... Of course, all your evil palace needs can be fulfilled to a much greater degree than ever in the light world. And that allows us to get over here. These guys over here, these are water tektites. They are like normal tektites, but much more watery. In fact, they look like water bugs, or act like water bugs. And they definitely skim along the surface of things that you normally have to swim along. Um, that little water globule monster, well, that in fact is a Kiamaron, and they're really annoying, and they like to just dick with you in a lot of situations, and they bounce around off walls, they're just awful. I hate those monsters. Anyway, we need to place a bomb here. And not get hit by one of the million fire or water balls flinging around. Here, of course, we have the dungeon map, and three little peeking eyeballs popping up from the ground. These guys are Zul's. Very similar to Chews and stuff from later games. And actually, I think, I think they're actually reviving the Zul's for Skyward Sword, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, there's our key. These later dungeons sort of like to put keys in spots that really um, force you to kind of to pick up every pot, do everything. Of course, eventually, you get it just all memorized like I do. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't think the fireball, like, crazy thing has a... I don't know, almost Mario-like enemy has a name, but it's annoying, so there's that. Pretty much every time, by the way, you head under one of these things, there's going to be a key down there. It's just something to remember. Always head up. Here we have two Stalfos, one blue who's annoying, and one red who throws bones, making him even more annoying. And of course, you've got to get over to this lever-looking thing here. Lever. Lever. Whatever. You flick it, and it turns on the water. Through the creepy snake mouth. This is actually the main chamber of this area. We're going to be coming back here quite a few times and weaving in and out of it. But for now, we head south. And enter the main chamber again. Yay! Love those creepy, like, three-eyed statues with the tongues. Awesome. Uh, this area has got a lot of Kiaramons, a uh, lot of these things called water beetles, and the, of course those really dick tiles that shoot out fire. There's just a lot of stuff to deal with, and I don't know, it's really annoying. There, that's what it is. Down south is a long little pathway that will eventually get us the compass, so we'll go ahead and do that. I don't really know why, since I don't ever use the compass, but whatever, we'll do it anyway. Because this is about being a 100% completionist, for no truly good reason. And there we go! Alright, so... Next up, we head over here, to the left. And we're going to complete this left section before we eventually weave back into the main room. Um, this left section is a little bit tricky with the whole, like, switches requiring to be pressed and, yeah, words failing. These particular blocks you can't push. It's 
instead we need to go up there and hit that lever. And no, I don't know why I'm demonstrating this after I've said it, but whatever, who cares. So, how do we get to the lever, you ask? Well, that's a great question. The answer is, using the key we found over here, we can head up to this section over here in the main room, which will now unlock, allowing us access to... da-da-da-da, the lever. And additionally, we have the switch. Thankfully, you can actually just, uh, swing your sword right through there and hit it, or you can even just dink it with the, uh, boomerang since it will go through the switch. What are those, plates? I don't know. Whatever. Now that this section's filled up with water, we can actually continue. But one thing you do need to know is you do need to set the uh, switch back up. If you try to go down below and do it before, there's a, the, a section where the little tiles, I guess, again, are going to be up, causing you... Uh, much pain and annoyance, which we'll see here in a second. So trust me, hit the switch. Save yourself the grief. Not even close, buddy, not even close. Souls are interesting, because using certain things, you can actually kill them right when they pop out of the ground, even though they look like they uh, should be protected or something. Like I'm getting a Zerg burrowed vibe from them, but no, they're... They're actually fully killable, interestingly enough. Now this section, again, it's always smart to head up there, but no, this one's a trick. You actually can push the blocks. Screw you, Zol. See what I mean? No sword, but yet a couple things, including the dungeon item, can kill them right when they pop up. It's weird. Uh, down here is a couple bits of heart, which are nice. Of course, you have to deal with the stupid... I'm not calling them that anymore. They're water bubbles. Stupid water bubbles. Uh, and we have two sides with holes you can fall down to access the dungeon. On one side we have... Money! Which is interesting, because that's the side where it's more clearly delineated that there's a treasure chest. In fact, it's even got that little green strip. Which makes you think, oh, I need to go to the left. But no. Just Nintendo, being a dick. Alright. <laughs> Bad bubbles. God damn it. And this right here is why you need that switch down. Because otherwise it will dick you over, you can't reach this area, and you will never get the, tre the chest you truly need. Right here, which contains the big key. And now that we got the big key, we can head back to the center area where the big treasure, or the treasure of the level, is. Thankfully, this uh, little trek isn't too long. I mean, really, it's just a pop, skip, and a swim away. And here we go, the big treasure, which for this one is the hookshot. Boing! Boing! Really weird description. Hookshot allows us to hook onto things, and it shoots out. Very important things, like these skulls or treasure chests. Um, it's not as intensely used as it'll eventually be used in the 3D Zelda games, but still has a pretty uh, interesting mechanic here and like you can hop around to get some hearts and of course the key which was the important one by the way water beetles those little things skimming around on the ground never ever looked like beetles to me definitely look like some sort of lizard anyway this section has two enemy gates at the at the top um, and we'll just get rid of this burrow and berries Bara. I don't even care anymore. Bari and Beeries, that's it. So, you put the thing on the thing, and guess what? This thing also opens. That's the trick. The trick is, both are enemy gates, and in fact, since both will open... You dick. Since both will open, they expect you to automatically go down the left side, 
which isn't really a smart idea considering that it just sort of loops you around and you need to head down this right one, which has a lever. Lever, this time draining the water. Maybe it's filling up the reservoir tanks in the other areas so the other levers can be pulled. But I really love this section. I love how once you drain the water, it's just like a tiny, like, ankle-high bit of water left. That's a really cool touch. And over here we have some quick refills. Interestingly enough, the water beetle doesn't seem to be able to go on the tiles where the uh, items were, so you can sort of just hang out there. Oh my god, I was wrong. I forgot. They don't look like beetles at all. They look like little Cthulhu monsters. Did you see that thing? It's like an octopus on drugs. And we are probably going to hit 999 rupees in here. Jerk. Alright, so this section sort of looks like a dead end until you realize that it's once again lying to you. And one of these can be walked through. The hint, of course, is when you're on the other side, you can see these little skull pots. Like so, as you can see the other area right now, which is sort of supposed to give you the hint that, hey, there's a secret area over there. It's actually a pretty good touch, because I was... I mean, I, I figure anything my six-year-old self can figure out has got to be pretty well designed. Because it's probably not my fault that I figured it out. And I probably wasn't six. I keep saying six-year-old self, but I'm pretty certain I was like eight or nine, maybe? I don't, I don't know. When did this game come out? 91? 92? Anyway, it's the reason you'll catch me uh, swimming backwards there for a second is to sort of lead the uh, water tech tights away. Because unfortunately they have a nasty ass habit of just sort of hanging there on the cliff edge. And yeah, you get hit the second you hop out, so... Wee. And that right there is the boss door. Anyway, this boss is Argus. Argus! Um... Argus is defeated, much like all the other bosses, by using the dungeon's weapon, which of course is the hookshot. Here we need to pull off a little Argy from him and kill him. One thing I found is that pulling off the Argy from certain directions is really dick. Like, almost always pulling it from the bottom like this ends up getting you hurt. Unless you're really fast on the draw, and even then sometimes. So that my, my preferred location is actually to pull from the top. Because I noticed, I noticed the sprite's never in a spot where you can actually get hurt. Um, unfortunately, that's just not possible all the time, since he does sort of home you down, and yeah, there you go. Even the sides, still pretty dangerous. Although I don't recall ever getting hurt by pulling it from the side, but... I'm, I'm gonna go with it's probably still possible. Gimme! Gimme! There we go. Cool. Once all the Argy are dead, Argus jumps up and sort of swims around the bottom of the thing, kind of reflecting around and bouncing off the walls. Um, you can either use a charge shot, or I think you can just hit him. I prefer the charge, because it's a lot easier. I think it's like four hits and he's dead? Five? Not four. There we go. Just like that, we've got another bitch in stone. Magic stone. Magic sparkly stone. Thank God no one ever gave him the magic mirror.
And believe me, trust me, I know about those warping points. I've already abused the shit out of them, so thank you. And never ever click not at all. You will hate your life. Because it'll do that whole giant thing again. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Next time, I'm gonna do a little sequence breaking, because fuck the next dungeon. I'm not doing Skull Woods. Instead, we're gonna go back to the Village Outcasts. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time. Peace.